Welcome to Fort Worth, man. Thank you. you know, the other Excited. side of the Metroplex for you, right? A little, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not too bad. Not, not too bad. Grew up in Plano. All right, let's go way back now. You've got a twin brother who's 37 minutes older than you. What's it like growing up with an older brother? Well, his wedges say older bro, so. Do they? Uh, he, he's, uh, <laughs> he never lets me forget, but every time, uh, you know, I beat him, it's nice to, you know, one-up him always. Yeah. But, but Parker has been, he's been good motivation for you, hasn't he? He's been, I mean, my closest friend. Uh, we've, you know, grew up living together, obviously, and in college we decided to separate, and it was kind of strange, uh, but we really are close on the golf course. Uh, we're always rooting for each other. He played in his first PJ Tour event before I did, but I could not have been more excited for him to uh, excel at the college level and get his first win. Uh, and it, we've made each other so much better. Uh, having a twin brother that's on the golf team with me that's you know plays at a very similar high level of golf is it's made a college very special. When, when you guys were six, you got to go with your grandfather to Augusta. Right. Uh, and, and it made national news when both of you drained long putts. You were not going to be outdone by Parker, huh? No. I, I just wanted to save mine for the one that's on TV and yeah. save it for the last hole. I, right, right. I couldn't do it too early in the round. Right, right, right. So he, he, he drains a long one early, right? And then yours is what, a 40-footer or so? Yeah, he made it on, you know, I'll say his putt was a little harder. I'll, I'll give him that. But yeah. my putt on nine was the standard one that you kind of get uh, down the ridge on the par three course. And yeah, it was about 40 feet, and luckily it went in. And I'm just looking at my granddad, like, what just happened? He's like, take off your hat, bow, and all this stuff. <laughs> so I, I gave the crowd a wave, and Lucas Glover and Fred Couples were in the group, and they gave us high fives, and it was, yeah, really special. You know, I, I want to, while we're there, let, let's, let's talk about your granddad. What kind of influence did Charles Cootie have on you in the game of golf, or did he just kind of let you play? He, growing up, um, he really just – let us play. He let us. He wanted us to be field players. Wanted us to uh, play the game, not how it should, or anything in particular, or any swing model. Just you know, how does the game of golf work for you? Uh, we were lucky to play a lot of sports growing up, and uh, that helped us just develop as golfers, as athletes, and be able to uh, you know just play the game and enjoy it with him. And the older we got, we um, continued to play and. He really pushed us to to get to a high level and show us what it could be like and kind of how it was done. So then if that's the case, how did he take it in the fifth grade when you said, I hate golf, I never want to play it again? Uh, I, I remember that day very vividly. I was, I, I think I caught him off guard to say the least. Yeah. I was, I go, I go up to my grandma, Diddy, when I, and I, I was like, I just, I just want to go to the mall. I just want to go watch a movie, hang out. I just, it's 100 degrees outside. I don't, I don't want to spend my summer uh, golfing. And uh, I think I turned around and told him, I hate golf, <laughs> and, <laughs> and just went to the mall. <laughs> and, and something changed along the way, though. Something changed. I think it changed pretty fast. But yeah. it was, yeah, I think caught him off guard. But, you, but uh, growing up, golf wasn't the only sport you played, right? No, I yeah, I could have sworn I was going to be a great football player growing up. And then I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to be 6'4", <laughs> and I'm not that fast. I'm just kind of a standard kid <laughs> going through high school. And uh, luckily, Coach Fields and some other colleges reached out at a young age around freshman year. And I was like, I guess I should stick with golf. <laughs> Even though uh, you, you grew up on the other side of the Metroplex, I can imagine, and we haven't talked about this, I can imagine that Colonial means a little something to you. It's, it's special. Um, I remember Mr. Barnes and my granddad, um, I came for one of the TCU football games, and yeah. uh, they walked me through the Hogan room, and just to see how special that is, and knowing the uh, success that my granddad had playing here as well, and how meaningful Colonial is to him, uh, just being able to represent this award and the Colonial membership has been incredible. Yet on the other side you, uh, of the Metroplex, you did play in the Byron Nelson with your dad on the back. Right. That had to be a special day, too. It was special. Could have clubbed me a little bit better. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Would have finished uh, higher, right? Would have, would have played better. Yeah, but, right. Yeah. Other than that, it was awesome. You know. <laughs> uh, let, let's close with this. Uh, Pierce, what do you know about Ben Hogan? Oh, uh, I know some of the stories that my granddad's told me. Um, it was the first, first uh, company that he signed with. Uh, and I just know that 
kind of the, like you said, the perseverance and the attitude that he had towards the game of golf and the way he carried himself is incredibly important. And all of us representing this ward, I think we try to emulate that. I'm glad you don't hate golf anymore. I don't hate golf anymore. Thank you, Pearson. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Pearson Cooney, ladies and gentlemen.